Well, it's finally the weekend. Well, I mean, at least for me. A new French action crime drama has just dropped on Netflix called Restless, and it stars a dude who looks like he could be a cross between Vin Diesel and Jason Statham. So is this one that you should add to your watch list? After going to extremes to cover up an accident, a corrupt cop's life spirals out of control when he starts receiving threats from a mysterious witness. So we meet Thomas as he's driving. Now he's on the phone with a family member and he's a bit distraught because somebody close to him has just died. Now he's also dodging phone calls and texts from coworkers about some apparent trouble that he's having at work. We soon find out that Thomas is a cop and people that look like they could be from internal affairs are coming to rifle through his locker looking for something that's incriminating. Now as this is happening, he's involved in an accident and that's really where the story begins. From the very start of this, Thomas makes a terrible decision that then creates the impetus for all future terrible decisions. I mean, you've got to turn off your logic for this movie. Many of the situations just in the first 20 minutes, I think are absolutely ridiculous. For example, I mean, he's a cop and he has an accident. You just simply call it in and then you can sweep it under the rug. And even if you're a dirty cop, you got dirty cop friends that you can call. So where's the issue? In another sequence, something has to be pulled through a ventilation shaft, but the object takes up the whole width of the shaft so that there's no way that it can make a 90 degree bend that is clearly shown to us. Ah, you know what, that's where story convenience is going to just take the care of that altogether so that our main character can accomplish his goal. Now, from the very beginning, we are supposed to be invested in Thomas, caring about his outcome and the situation that he finds himself in. The problem, though, is that we're not given any background development on him other than the fact that he may not be the most honest of characters. But, you know, when problems arise for him, we're supposed to be concerned. But I don't understand why. I mean, why would I care? It's almost like they're trying to create this principled stance for somebody that they've already explained doesn't have any principles. This is the whole manufactured if you give a mouse a cookie scenario, except we're missing a large chunk of the portion of why we care. But you know, if you just shut off the logical part of your brain that would naturally ask these types of questions, you might enjoy some of the tension that these situations create. Now, as I had said in the synopsis, it turns out that there is a witness to this accident, which then leads to some threatening phone calls. Something the story does, though, is pretty curious. It reveals the caller to us fairly early on in the movie. Now, sure, that reveal is to help add a different complication, but logically, it takes all the wind out of their sails. Thomas does get into some fights, and they are fun, but they're not prevalent enough to make this a good action movie. I mean, I've got to say, though, that there is a kill later on in the movie that is completely unexpected. The way that the shot was framed, I mean, I felt sure that I knew what was going to happen. I was wrong. The outcome was brutally cool. It's one of those moments that I almost rewound just because it was different and shocking. So the story is built to engage Thomas in actual detective work at some point where he's trying to solve a mystery, but also get himself out of trouble. Now, I think this angle could work really well if the plot had set him up as a character that's worthy of this redemption. I like that he was following clues, even if they were sparse and even somewhat obvious, because it added a small layer of intrigue to the narrative. But just about every action that Thomas does is reactive. I mean, it's okay for a portion of the story, but at some point, we want our main character to become the driver of the story instead of the recipient where he is just a puppet for a worse bad guy. The cinematography is okay for this, but it's nothing spectacular. There are some moments, though, that they capture some beautiful shots. I just wish there were more of them. The fight choreography for the few fights that there are, I think it's decent. And there are a couple of close quarter brawls, and they're exciting to watch, and they feel very intense. I think, though, if you begin this, you're going to see the trajectory of the entire movie pretty early on. Now, you may not see some of the smaller nuances, like that one shocking kill that I had mentioned, but overall, this is a very predictable storyline. And for this type of film, that predictability just makes it uninteresting to watch and then not terribly exciting. So overall, this is just another story that wastes its potential by not building out characters that are engaging or complex. The blackmail type of plot could be rich with complications that would place our main character in situations that feel dire or weighty, but instead we watch a dude run around trying to appease some other dude in the hopes that his own misdeeds won't be exposed. The cinematography can be good and the pacing has some good momentum to it, but ultimately when a bad guy is threatening another bad guy, from a story perspective, do we even care? Everything in this is so surface level that it's incredibly hard to get engaged. I think if they'd at least amped up the action sequences just a bit, it would have been an exciting watch. But as it stands, this is an unengaging way to waste 95 minutes of your day. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give Restless two out of five couches.
So what are you watching this weekend? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.